Hoi hoi and welcome to the video. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and guess what? I'm back! No, seriously though. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's taken me a little while to get to the point where I could actually have a space for recording that wasn't, you know, in the middle of the house ever since the disaster that destroyed my last uh, recording area. <laughs> And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you haven't been paying attention because, man, do I not stop talking about how a tree almost des uh, destroyed everything I own. Um, but I'm back for the moment. Um, and I am in a new space that was paid for by a GoFundMe. Um, right now, I really only have a desk and a bed in here, but uh, I think that's pretty good. I have a GoFundMe still going um, if you guys would like to contribute to the possibility of me getting a little bit more furniture. But um, I'm happy with things as they are. Either way, today, we are going to go over some dank memes from the dank memes from Site19 subreddit. Um, I'm pretty sure going forward, I won't be able to do video for a while until I can figure out what's wrong with my uh, camera setup. But um, I can, I'm okay with that. I mean, we can go back to just doing this. This first one is Antimonies Slantimonies meme. Researcher Rosen, Pattern Screamer, is trying to get noticed. I, you know... Mm, I don't know. Modern pattern screamers actually don't really work for me as well as they used to do, too, because everyone's trying to explain what pattern screamers are, and I thought what was really made them... It's funny, because uh, we talk about, like, what Series 1 means, or, like, what's a Series 1 feeling article mean, but at the same time, I liked pattern screamers because I didn't know what they were. There was a certain level of malice in the mystery, but the more you explain them... The more you explain anything, to be honest with you, the uh, less scary it can be, which is fine, because I'm not a particular fan of horror anyway. Like, it just doesn't get me the same way. But Pattern Screamers were one of the few things where I was like, I had this, I guess it wasn't even so much the horror of it. It was sort of the mystery is what drove my interest in it, in the sense of the, like, my brain was going, oh, that unknowable eldritch something. But, uh. Yeah, I actually don't know who Researcher Rosen is in this particular meme, but that's okay, because Pattern Screamers trying to get noticed, I get, yeah. A broken, this one is by Dead for December. A broken masquerade would lead to nightmarish reforms of DRM, yeah. What? Mimetic and anamimetics both involve the transfer and storage of information and how, to and how to manipulate it. After a broken masquerade, companies could make it physically impossible to copy their works or make, I actually think I pitch something like this on discord one at one point make it physically impossible to copy their works or make their media imperceptible unless you pay for the custom nestic agents jesse you better not be making anomalous nfts which is also a thing that would happen um yeah no in a broken it, like in a world where magic existed this is the thing by the way not just broken masquerade even in a world where you know the scp foundation the goc and all those things existed and we're trying to keep things under wraps if magic really existed like, really existed, then it would be impossible to keep it under wraps. First of all, because the people you're trying to fight are the people with the magic. <laughs> Secondly, the companies would take over. Like, powerful governments would take over and start using. No no powerful government is going to sit back and be like, hey, you know, I, I'm not, I should say some powerful governments would, but most powerful governments, especially in dictatorial regimes, wouldn't sit back and be like, well, you know, we've got this tool that we could use to keep our populace completely compliant with everything we want to do and vote for whoever we want to in elections to make it look like democracy. But... I mean, it's anomalous, and the foundation won't let us, so, you know, we just can't do... No, no, and corporations would do stuff like this, and, and more. There would be corporate. There would have to be laws, be like... But then how do you enforce them? But there would be laws, be like, you can't anomalously f compel people to buy your stuff. That's wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, that's just how you know there isn't these things in the world, to be honest with you. This one's by Fanboy X27, the Pataphysics Department, author avatars. <laughs> uh, as someone who actually has written an author avatar onto the site, that's uh, fairly popular, I have to say. Uh, mm, I'm, you know, to be honest with you, it, it's fun in a way, and and some of these characters have developed beyond their core of what they used to be, but. Uh, I think there is something to be said for the idea that 
moving away from other avatars as a site would probably show a certain amount of maturing as a writing site, but you gotta go with what you got, I guess. <laughs> and we have amateur writers like myself. Even if I do get paid sometimes for writing, it's not usually for the SCP Wiki, so... Eh. We're amateur writers. Let's have some fun. Government agencies in control. Not just control in a lot of uh, paranormal fiction. We single-handedly defend the Earth from the horrors of the multiverse. Federal Bureau of Control, United States of America. Government agencies in SCP. The unusual... Uh, I'm sorry, the Federal Bureau of Investigations Unusual Incidents Unit. Please help. We're so understaffed. See, that's what makes... I, I honestly, to God, think that's what the UIU actually... That makes the UIU sort of, like, work in that it is such a departure from how most fiction handles this. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, quite enjoy it. And by the way, this meme is by Moon God Ray 057 Yeah. But yeah, no, it's, it's, it's pretty funny when you look at the difference between, the, say, the UIU or any government agencies in literally any fiction. Like, cause usually, consp this is the thing, usually conspiracy fiction has this, like... Oh, I was about to use a, a phrase that's probably a little bit too adult for the channel. Uh, usually has a bit of a, um, what's the word? Is holding out a torch for government agencies, even though they purport to be like anti-government and they're like, oh, the government's trying to get you. They have this idea of the federal government or, or the world government in some cases, or, you know, whatever country you're from. But they have this idea in their head that it's super powerful and super competent and no one can truly fight it except for them because they know the secrets. That's how conspiracy theorists tend to think. Uh, and so taking that and just going, you know, what What if the UIU sucked? What if, what if the FBI was just really bad at investigating the paranormal? And it had to be outsourced to just some private company and or foundation. I, I like it. Pivot, OB's meme, the racist interdimensional monster that lives in his window. See, I, you know, I've, this is one of the, this, this particular SCP and, oh God, I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but the racist as the racist interdimensional monster um, is one of the SCPs that really like drew me into the wiki. Um, and I don't know how old it is exactly, but it's one of the SCPs that really formed my basis for how I think that things should be written on the SCP wiki, if you know what I mean. Oh, it's actually got a watermark, so that's helpful, too. I actually just name all of the image files as, uh, after whoever it is so I can uh, say it when I when I scroll over to it. Um, but no, yeah, that, that SCP in particular, uh, any anything that really, like, covers sort of, like, alien... Uh, to me, I always thought interdimensional alien, but, you know, potato, potato, I guess. You can call it a monster. But, um, you yeah, know, it's... It's always an interesting uh, way to look at the world. It's like, oh, hey, what if what if the monsters were anti-human, you know? <laughs> it's sort of a twist on a well-known concept. You just got to love that stuff. The first of many shoulder memes. The Wanderer's Library, when they realize they can rent continued sequels of already finished book series on Earth and get that diehard fan money business. This is absolutely true and something that someone would probably get around to doing at some point. Uh, and I, I, I only included it because it's just like, yes, this is a thing that would happen. Uh, another shoulder meme. SCP fan learning how to write in clinical tone and going through multiple levels of critique and posting an article for only the purpose of using it as a counter argument against <laughs> SCP related debate. So you run into somebody who doesn't really understand that there is no canon. So you write a article that'll survive on the SCP wiki and, and then use that to be like, no, what I said is correct. See, here's the article. Oh man. I love it. I love it. Shoulder meme three. The world is ending from a newly discovered anomaly classification committee, pondering whether to classify it as a polyon or perhaps Serenos. Yeah. Let's not actually deal with the problem. Let's just figure out how we're going to classify it. This one is by Summer Fox, the SCP Foundation, after plastering their logo and initials on every single thing they own. Sneak 100. Uh, yeah, that's really more of a, um, what's the word? It's really more for the reader and the writer than it is for, like, making sense in-universe. And, and to be fair, this is a valid critique, I think, because 
if it doesn't make sense. A lot of your writing should make sense. So does it make sense that, uh, you know, the so-and-so uses Southern Crosscut Pines? But here's the way I looked at it when I created, for example, Southern Crosscut Pines as a um, sort of a front company for the SCP Foundation. Sometimes you want people to know who are in the know that it's a front company, right? You don't want the GOC running into your anomalous front company and thinking that they can just go nuts on it when you have prior agreements and interactions with them, right? So they look at it and they see that it's Southern Crosscut Pines and they go, hold on a second, let's let's e let's send an email or make a call real quick before we go in guns blazing and make sure that we're not going to, first of all, get our shit wrecked. <laughs> Second of all, maybe this is cleared already and we just don't know because it's secret and that's how all this stuff works. The logo, on the other hand, I have no idea and it does show up probably, but the initials, I think, is pretty useful, right? But eh, I think, you know, oh gosh, it's just the inspired a story idea in me, but like some small or weak uh, group of interest using the SCP Foundation's initials as their like front companies just for the purpose of fooling everyone into thinking that it's <laughs> that it might be foundation related. That's interesting. That's really interesting. You could use that to explore like why they would do that in the first place and like talk about how the SCP Foundation has to clean this up because, you know, the GOC and Marshall Carter and Dark and some of the other uh, powerful, like, even government-based uh, anomaly controlling uh, groups are like, hey, listen, we know we're supposed to pay attention to this and, like, whatever, so you can't just let these guys do this. You have to stop them. Interesting. Yeah, you could really explore the interactions of the GOIs. I'm sorry, you've inspired me to have an idea here, Summer Fox. Uh, either way, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. Now, I will make a special... Now, to be fair, I haven't uploaded in about three weeks, almost four now. Uh, but, you know, there have been extenuating circumstances. I'm back now. Now, I will say, if you enjoy my videos and you'd like to continue to see more of them, and I have some, hopefully... I've said this before and then not followed through on it because I have had things happen. But I've got some really interesting stuff coming down the line. I think I can get done. And I really want you to see it. But <laughs> my Patreon has gone from sustainable numbers to not sustainable numbers. And the advertising revenue on YouTube is so up and down it's hard to tell. So I'm making a special request that if you can... Pledge on Patreon or join on YouTube, by the way. That's also an option because we have uh, memberships on YouTube now. Please go ahead and do it. We have uh, people on the screen right now who have pledged. And God, I appreciate you so much. Especially you, Sinjariki, who has pledged at $100. We lost one of our $100 patrons this month. Um, and that surprisingly hurts, especially when, you know, your house is destroyed. <laughs> but I'm making do. So thank you very much for watching. And thank you for letting me know that I'm not alone out here. And I will see you all again next week.